Uh, welcome back to another video. This is uh, the new flight controller from Speedy Bee. It's the F405 Wing Mini, which is sort of a little brother to the, the bigger wing we released over a year ago. In this video, I've got hold of one, so I'm going to just show you what we get in the box and possible setup. I have got a plane coming I want to fit this to. I'm not too sure exactly which plane now. I've got a couple in the pipeline. One being a Zod Drift and the other one an Adam RC Dolphin. So it's possible I might do either one of those. I'm not too sure yet. So let's have a look and see what we get here in our box. So straight up in the box, you can see you get your um, your three your three little boards, or well, one's your USB extender on the left here. And this one here will be your flight controller. And you've got your, your power distribution board on the right hand side here. Uh, please note there's still soldering to be done on this board just like the, the bigger brother. Uh, although it is plug and play, things are a lot easier on these boards. There are certain spots here you still have to solder such as the, the wiring for your battery, ESCs, motor and that sort of stuff. So USB extender here, pretty much the same extender that came with the F405 wing, I believe. Although they, they do say on this one, that you have upgraded wireless 2.0 on this board, which is supposed to give you quicker connection to you know, app-based programs such as iNav and um, Ardu Pilot through the SpeedyB app and, um, and through your computer too, if you're hooking it up. I don't think you can upgrade the firmware. It's still best to be done uh, via a cable, and I agree too. It's just a more secure way, less chance of having a, a bricked flight controller due to some sort of dropout in your Wi-Fi. Uh, here's your flight controller, so be a bit careful. There are pins which you need to connect into your power distribution board. So the same here, you've got all your, your pin layout on the bottom. So soldering needs to be done with your pins. So if you're not confident to do that, you need to either brush up on your skills or uh, maybe think about it a bit more. You've got your SD card slot is in the same spot as the other one, which I was a bit skeptical about too with that. I just like to be able to get them out easy, but but I guess you can transfer through uh, through iNav, you can transfer your data log files wirelessly, which I have done, which isn't too bad. It's a bit slower, but um, I guess it beats pulling it, and pulling it apart to get your SD card out. So that's not too bad. And last in the top here is the, is the power, power distribution board. You've got the six solder pads there for your ESCs and battery terminals. And on the other side here, uh, you've got a you can actually solder either side. So the, the, it does give you some options, this board, um, how you want to set it up. Okay, so underneath the, the three boards, you've got your wiring and all your, your package stuff. So what have we got here? We've got our three cables. So these will be all your cables for your GPS, video transmission, etc. that sort of stuff, your cable that hooks up your USB extender as well will be in there. So you've got your header pins. So like I said, soldering is needed. Regardless of which way you want to set your board up, you do need to do some soldering. Uh, you've got some brass standoffs and screws in here. Your capacitor, 35 volt low ESR capacitor. Another cable here, I'm not too sure exactly what it is. I guess that one there may go to your, may be able to be used for your receiver or something like that, I guess. So that's everything there you get in your box there, all your wiring, your header pins and screws. Now we'll move on and have a closer look at the boards. So with the flight control, everything's labelled. So you can see on your, your top the top port here is where your GPS will go. It's written below it, so you can't get it wrong. You've got all your pins on the bottom here for motor, ESC, etc. You've got an RSSI soldering pad just to the right of the, the screw hole. And the three pins to the very left here are your SBUS inputs. Up the top here is your, your pins. You have to be very gentle not to bend these. 
That's your connection to your power distribution board. Over here, you got the four soldering pads. That's for your telemetry. And up the top, like I said, it was your GPS up the top here. You can also solder the GPS if you want to do that instead of using the plug. You can solder it. On the pads at the top here, just below the SD card, is where your video transmission goes. You have the four pins on this side up for your analog. And then you've got three pins on the other side, which are for your high definition uh, video transmission. And down the very bottom here, the very two end pads on the right are for your dual cameras. So you can add two cameras onto this here, switching between one or the other. And then you've just got your ground and your power supply uh, next to those. And across over this other side here is where you'll hook in things like airspeed sensor, that sort of thing, your analog or digital airspeed sensor. And last but not least uh, is your receiver, your Express LRS and or TBS receiver will plug in up here. So looking at the back of the board, you've got your camera, analog camera port on this left hand side at the top. Next to that, you've got your video transmission for analog as well. And to the other side is your high definition video transmission on that side there. So they're all just your normal plug and play. Quite simple, it's even labeled. You can read on there, one says, uh, says DJI, VTX and camera. Your USB extender plugs into here. The um, cables are all in the box too, which we'll get to eventually. Telemetry connector goes into the other side here. Now this board can also be mounted up this way as well, depending on how you want to set it up. It gives you quite a few different um, varieties there to do that. And the four solder pads just above the pins here. You can put in things such as your LEDs. It also, the solder pads for um, S10 and S11. Your LED, which is uh, the very left-hand side of those pads, uh, can be converted to an S12 output as well. So. It gives you a lot of options there from S10, S11 and S12 outputs on top of what you've got down the bottom here. So if we have a look at the USB extender here. So at the top here, we've got our boot button. You've got our connection to the flight controller um, on the right hand side. The bottom here, you've got a buzzer switch so you can turn it on or off. And then you've got your USB type C connector on the left hand side here. You've got an indicator up here, which is your wireless, which will flash uh, to indicate your know, built-in telemetry function, that sort of stuff. You, you may want to use the Wi-Fi or not, you don't need to. Personally, I still like to put it into my computer, but it is handy out on the field if you can just get yeah, to do some minor tuning and that sort of stuff. Back of your power distribution board, you're going to be plugging your positive for your battery into the very left side here, your negative over to the other side there. Uh, ESCs will go in either one here, so you've got two there for positive, two there for negative. And the front of the board here, uh, battery negative on this side here, it's all labelled, and battery positive on this side here. So you've got your ESC, two pads for ESC positive, and two pads for negative right there. So here, here's a diagram of the peripheral connection on the flight control board and where everything actually just plugs in. So your receiver down the bottom here, using TBS or Express LRS, will, will work off these pads here on the bottom. If you want to solder them, you can use the pins as well. Uh, you've got your GPS model up, module up the top here, which plugs straight in. You've got the cable with that as well. FPV camera, analog VTX in the middle, high definition VTX on this side here, and S bus PPM receiver over the far side on the bottom. Now, if you're into the soldering, flight controller has to be flipped the other way. That's your layout there for your soldering. So GPS up the top, the top four pads, dual camera switching is set up in that particular way. Digital analog airspeed sensor is put into the soldered to the pads on the right hand side here. Analog video transmission, it says here both analog and high definition VTX share the same T5 solder pad. So they, they, yeah, they, they go to the bottom there. And your camera also, you can see they're both set up basically the same except for the final two for the HD go over the far side. 
So to be honest, I mean, I'm still going to be using the plug and play as much as I can. I don't see the point in soldering, although some people do like to do that. But at least the option's there. If you have an issue, you can flip the board over by the look and solder up. Okay, so what I might do, I'll do a quick setup of this board. And we'll put it together just so we can install a basic setup for iNav. So you can set this board up in two ways, two, two parts you can set it up. Uh, you've got your standard installation shield board you can use. You can set it up with the custom shield boards. Right, so basically what I want to start with is this board here. So we're going to grab four screws and standoffs to go into that. So what I want to do with this, so I want to build a smallish plane that I can take everywhere. The main goal for this plane, I want it to be a, a semi-long distance plane. It's going to run iNav, it's going to run Express LRS and probably use preferably the high definition setup I'm going to be getting into with my uh, walk snail goggles that I've just purchased. So uh, my main goal with it, this whatever plane I'm deciding to use, have a plane I can I can take anywhere. It's not going to take up much space for starters in my travel kit, and it's very simple to pull apart and and, and set up again. All right. So next we put our flight control board on. Be careful with your pins. You don't want to bend these, so just be very gentle when you're pushing it in. It should easily sit in there and your, lock, your holes should line up like that. Um, and next we need to put in our little screws. Uh, these, are little, uh, these are the little round male, female copper standoffs. Should have four of them, yep. Actually, they've sent me a spare, so I've got one, one spare of everything here, which is good. And I'm only just temporarily setting this up so I can so I can install iNav. You need little fingers. And then on top of that will be the custom shield board. You can either use that one there. Or you can use this one here. One F405 wing mini board, all made up, not soldered though. So yeah, like I said, we're gonna be undoing all this. This is just to temporarily set it up. Right, so USB extender. Now what we need is to find out what cable goes from the USB extender into the flight controller. Okay, so the cable you need is the one that's got, got the majority of all the white cables in it plugged in neatly there like that and on this side here like that just be gentle when you're pushing things in don't over if it doesn't go in try and work out why it's tight or why it's not correct so that's it there that's your usb extender connected up okay we might go over to the computer now and we'll install iNav Firmware upgrade, Speedy B F405 Wing Mini does not support wireless firmware flashing. Uh, please update the firmware by using computer by following these steps. So we need to press and hold the boot button while connecting the flight controller to your computer via the USB cable. Okay, so I've got my USB connected in and we'll just hook it up into the computer. See little red lights come on, uh, indicating that you're connected. And we'll open up uh, iNav Configurator. So I'm running, uh, at this moment, I'm running iNav Configurator 7.0.1. Uh, auto select target. Does it work? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't work. So we need to, we need to scroll down here and we need to choose Speedy B F405 Wing. And I'm going to be installing iNav 7.0. Well, 
or load firmware online. We'll scroll down, read up if you haven't. I'm not bothering because I've already got this installed on some of my others. And click Flash Firmware. Yeah, very important, just to let it do its job. It could take one or two minutes depending on how quick your computer is. So let it erase and then it will uh, install the firmware and verify and it should come up as successful when it's done. There we go, programming is successful. That's what you should come up with. So well. Okay, so that's rebooted and that there you can hear is my buzzer going off. So, like I said before, you've got to switch on your USB extender there that can turn the buzzer on and off. So it doesn't annoy you like that. Right, so now what we'll do, we'll unplug the USB cable from the computer. Okay, so we've booted back up again and what we'll do is plug back into the computer and what do we get? COM port 4 is connected, so we should be all good to go. If we hit the connect button, we are on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this up uh, at this stage just for a airplane. Uh, we've got our delta wing, I think it will be. A delta wing or airplane with a tail? I'm not too sure. But anyway, what we'll do, we'll set it up as a delta wing just to show you how to install this. Um, I may change this depending on what plane I decide to put it in. But at this stage, we'll just do a basic setup, setting it up as a delta wing. So now that we've connected, um, I can move the flight controller around. It should, the layout of this plane moving should move exactly the same direction as the arrow pointing on the flight controller. So the arrow on the flight controller should be pointing to the front of the plane. So if I dip the front of it down, the, dip, the nose goes down. If I dip the back of the flight controller down, the back of the plane goes down. If I tilt it to the right, it banks. If I tilt it to the left, it does that. Okay, so you can change all that obviously, but I'm just doing a basic setup here just to uh, run it through with you. What we'll do is calibrate. We will calibrate our flight controller. So click Accelerate, Calibrate Accelerometer. Place the flight controller in position shown in the image and press Calibrate button. Repeat for each six positions, keeping it stable during calibration. Very important, don't move, don't move the flight controller while it's being calibrated. All right, so we'll click Calibrate Accelerometer. Calibrate that side. We'll turn it upside down this time and click it again. That should do the top, yep. Now we'll do, put it up on its end. Beautiful, we'll put it up on its side. Pop it up on the computer there, click accelerate, calibrate accelerometer. Okay, and then we've got one more. And there we go. Calibration is finished. Accelerometer calibration is finished. Check if the values have been saved. So we will click OK and then save and reboot. I like iNav. I'm, I'm a more of an iNav person than a Hardu pilot. I do understand Hardu pilots probably got the edge over iNav in the way of what it can do, obviously. It's been around a lot longer, but I just like the simplicity of iNav. It works well, it hasn't failed me, and I think the guys at iNav do a fantastic job getting this out, so I support them 100%. Right, so we'll move into our mixer tab. This is a basic setup, so you'll set the same thing up on any, any craft. We're gonna just select flying wing. Differential thrust is if you've got more than one motor. So you can use your, your motors kind of like a rudder. So I'm just gonna leave it like that at this stage. Um, we don't need to really do anything else here at this stage. I'm gonna say there'll be a, this is a base, it's gonna be a basic setup that um, 
uh, will require additional setting up as we build the plane. Let's have a look at our output tabs now. So what we'll do, we'll enable motor and servo output because that's basically going to have to happen eventually anyway. I'm not going to worry too much about the ESC protocol because I don't even know what ESC I'm going to be putting onto this yet. That's basically all I'm going to leave with that at the moment. So save and reboot that. I think the most important thing is before you do anything is do your calibration of your accelerometer before you've got wires or anything set up on it because that way you can get it as still as possible without having anything in the road. Okay, let's head into our ports tab. I'm not going to be too worried about this one either at the moment because nothing's set up. So yeah, we'll adjust all this later on as we go into it. Configuration tab. Uh, nothing much I'm going to worry about here either at this stage. Continuously trim servos on the fixed wing. I do like that, so I'm going to turn that on. Automatic battery profile selection. I'm not going to worry too much about. Throttle voltage compensation. That's that's if you want to if you want it to automatically compensate for the battery drop when you're under acceleration. Um, I believe that's the way I say it. Um, profile selection. All right. Permanently enable launch mode for fixed wing. I do want that. I love for launch mode. And I do like to maiden my planes with launch mode enabled. Something that I don't really recommend, I guess, unless you know what you're doing. We'll leave it at that. Telemetry outputs on. I'm not going to worry about anything else there. Over on the other side, voltage. I'm not, I, I don't even need to adjust any of this really at this stage. We can play around with, if we go into our settings, there are specifications on on the Speedy B F405 wing. If we go into VBAT, the ADC section here, our voltage scale reads 1100, and that's what we've got anyway. Voltage scale is showing 1100, so it automatically detected that. Now our current is at 195, which has automatically detected that too. Fantastic. So a lot of the times you have to change that. You may need to change it possibly once you're set up if you want to really try and fine tune it, but it's selected, selected everything as it needed to um, on default, which is quite good. Uh, I'm not too sure about the battery that I'm going to be just using at this stage. So if you know about that, you would set your battery minimum cell voltage, maximum cell voltage. I'm just going to leave that capacity of the battery. I'm probably just going to set it to somewhere around a 2000 milliamp battery. We'll leave it at that. And we'll set a warning up at 35% and critical at 20. Save it and reboot. Now, probably this is a very important one to sort of do straight away, I think, is your fail safe. Because for some reason, it's always set just to land. I don't know why it's like that. Why don't they just make it return to home? I don't know why. It's always set to land. So I would have thought default would be better, return to home. So select return to home. And then save and reboot again. Uh, PID tuning, not going to worry about that. Advanced tuning tab. Right, so there's probably not much I'm going to worry about either in here at this stage. Um, I will fiddle around with the launch settings eventually. But I don't think I'm going to be too phased about this. What have we got? Return to home settings. Return to home altitude, I've got it 50 metres. Yeah, it could go up a little bit if you really wanted to. You could adjust that. Climb on return to home. Climb first stage method at least. Climb first stage altitude. 
uh, use linear descent, use linear descent start distance. They're all new, I believe. I haven't haven't filled with them yet. Um, return to home backtrack mode. That's an interesting one. When it's enabled, the aircraft will follow its last path backwards, which is good because if you if you go behind a mountain or something tall, a building, let's say, and you lose range, usually your craft will just fly straightly direct in line of sight to you from there. So if you've got a building between you or a mountain or whatever, it's gonna hit it. So having that enabled is quite handy. It will backtrack its last path backwards before flying home. So I might put that on. Uh, return to home backtrack distance. Distance flown to its backtrack. Normal return to home is executed once the total flight distance is exceeded. I think we'll just leave it like that for the moment. Um, safe mode is return to home. Re land after return to home only on a fail safe. You don't want it to land really, unless it's de unless it's desperate measures. You've lost your battery and your transmitter's flat or whatever. And there's no other way of getting it down, so you do want it to land on a fail safe. Um, other settings here I'm not going to worry too much about. That's all good. Navigation settings I'm just going to leave. Loiter radius is at 75 metres. I'll just leave it at that. I might tighten that up later on. And loiter direction. Let's save and reboot. Like I said, this is a basic setup. Just to basically get the firmware installed, really. And a quick look over the tabs. Programming I'm not going to worry about. Receiver, I'm not going to worry about either just at this stage. Um, although it will be set up for crossfire. So we will leave it at that stage just at the moment. Uh, modes, I'm not going to even worry about that either at the moment. GPS, I'm not going to worry about because I haven't got a GPS for it. But what we can do is um, we can enable it. U block 7. Ground Assistant Type Use, Galileo. Now, sometimes when you when you connect, when you select all these three, uh, you come back in and they haven't selected. Apparently, not all or all GPSs can handle all of these at once. So depending on what your GPS is, you may not be able to select everything here um, so if you wonder why you've selected it and then when you come back in here it's been deselected um, that's probably why but i'm going to just select it at the moment okay so what we'll do is save and reboot again um <clears throat> alignment tool we don't need to worry about this is a new a new section which is pretty cool. Uh, mission control, we don't need to worry about. On-screen display. What I normally do, I like to keep all my planes, the on-screen display the same pretty much with all my planes. So what I'm going to do is go into one of my planes default files and I'm going to select all the on-screen display settings out of that file and paste it into the CLI. That way I've got the exact same setup on screen display as I do in all my planes. So if you don't do that and this is your first time, then you need to go through all of this here, um, selecting what you want to put on, what you don't want to put on. You can turn stuff off just by the tabs here. So it's worth having to play around with. Um, LED strip, I'm not worrying about. Sensors, I'm not worrying about. Now the black box, it's got a flight controller. So the black box, um, onboard SD card slot will be set to 132, 3%, and then we'll save and reboot. Navigation accelerometer, I'm not going to worry about too much of that, and we'll save and reboot. And that's basically it now, guys. That's, that's a real simple setup there, just like that. Obviously, you're not going to fly like that. You've got a lot more to do once you get everything hooked up to your plane and everything is set into the plane. I think the most important thing to do before you install any flight controller to any craft is to do your accelerate 
accelerometer calibration while it, there's no wiring or no soldering on the flight controller. Do it so it's simple, easy to do. You can hold it as still as possible and it'll be as, it'll be as accurate as it can be. That's my only recommendation. Other than that, everything else I've done here is just having a bit of a look. You'll, you'll go back through it all again later on. So we're done. I'll just disconnect the flight controller now. So there you go, guys. That's the basic setup um, and unboxing of the Speedy B F405 Wing Mini that's just been released. Uh, next stage for me will be putting it into a build and we'll do that together as well as we uh, venture into that and then the Maiden following from there. So. Guys, the uh, looks like a pretty cool flight controller again for small fixed wing craft. Good job, for Speedy B, on doing what you've done here. And thanks a lot for your support with it. Uh, any questions, just uh, leave in the comments section there. There's also a link in this video too to uh, the website where you can purchase this product and other purchases um, through Speedy B. Enjoy, guys. Hopefully, you'll. Um, You'll find good pleasure in this flight controller like I have with the previous one and hope to do with this one as well in this next build I'm doing. So all in all, happy flying guys, keep with it and see you next video. Bye for now.